Hey folks, Ron here. Well, I may have to pause already. There's always something going on which makes you have to pause. Anyway, today I'm going to be showing you. Oh, right in the sun, this way. Yes, the dog's with me causing problems again. Let's turn around this way for a minute. Today I'm going to show you the building which is right behind me. That big skyscraper and security's already looking out. The building, the luxury condominium building where the businessman, producer, philanthropist Steve Bing jumped to his death. A sort of a shocking, but not shocking if you hear his friends, suicide in 2020. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Steve Bing. Oh, I also want to say that a big shout out goes on to, goes out to, boy, a lot of traffic. My subscriber, Stan. I hope it's you, Stan. I hope you're a subscriber, Stan, but Stan recommended actually just a day ago that I do this vlog. So Stan, this one's for you. I'm doing it. It's not easy to get up to this building and I don't know how much I'm going to be able to film before they chase me away. But I'll certainly shoot. Well, actually, here's the building behind me. So Steve Bing jumped from the 27th floor of that high rise, of this high rise right here. And uh, it was weird because when I was walking by a minute ago, one of the security guys just waved at me like he knew me. Maybe he thought I was a resident. Uh, I wouldn't want to live in a high rise, though. I mean, heights don't bother me that much, but 27 stories up, something. Anyway, it's right uh, on the border between, sort of between Century City and Beverly Hills, and it's just steps away from Beverly Hills High School, which is ironic because Steve Bing actually went to Harvard Westlake, which is also a Beverly Hills school, very exclusive prep school. I guess it's a prep school. I don't know from such things. All right, so let's take another look here. All right, let's see if I can sneak a look at the building here without getting kicked out. And someone on the corner with dogs. Well, I'll keep shooting like this. Now he's turned around. That's the guy who waved at me. But there's another... Oh, these people are right where I want to be. Right where I want to be. Doesn't it always just happen that way? All right, let's pause and come back to you when it's a little better. Hold on. There's another shot. It's kind of the lobby. One. That's his valet parking. It's really the closest we can get. Let's keep going. Oh, still going. Okay. Now, as you can see, we've got a hedge. Sorry, you're looking at just a hedge, but there's a hedge all around the building. They do not want you looking in. Not that there's much to see, just the building. There's another entrance we're coming up to. And in a minute, you know, all hedge and Santa Monica Boulevard right here. Very busy street. And I would imagine quite noisy day and night, even at night, even with uh, what I'm sure are dual pane windows. And there's one of our first Beverly Hills signs. So we're actually we're entering Beverly Hills. We're on the border of Beverly Hills, Century City. If we were to cross the street, we'd be at Beverly Hills City Limit. All right, come on. All right, now. This way. All right, let's get some other shots of the building behind us if we can. I'm sorry. Let's wait till we're out of the direct sunlight in a minute. And we'll tell you about Steve Bing, who I really didn't know anything about. And even though the suicide was not that long ago, I did not follow the case. Okay. Those who live in the building ought to be young and rich and have little dogs. There's the gym on that floor, and there's the building. Showed quite a large pool there, too. All right, so we're going to keep talking about Steve Bing here. Take off my shades for a minute, folks. So, now, Steve Bing, an interesting case. Um, he was born in, I'm referring to some notes here, too, so if you see me looking down. He was born in New York City in 1965. His mother was a nurse. His father was a doctor in public health. Um, he went to, like I said, Harvard-Westlake High School in Beverly Hills. 
But at age 28, everything changed. He inherited $600 million from his uh, fraternal grandfather, uh, Leo Bing, who was a real estate developer, and he made his fortune in the 20s in New York. I guess when everybody else was hit by the Great Depression. Hold on here, dog's starting to go crazy. Just wait a second. Anyway, uh, he dropped out of Stanford when he inherited all that money and uh, his junior year. <clears throat> then he decided to get into the movie business and producing mainly, a lot of it with his own money. So he sunk 20, $280 million in the movie Polar Express, the Tom Hanks movie, and it uh, made $285 million dollars uh, worldwide so we don't know how much he made out of it I guess it was an okay investment um, and then he also financed some lesser known films throughout his career um, he contributed very heavily in fact he could be called a democratic activist he contributed very heavily to the Democratic Party uh, in fact to the DNC alone Democratic National Convention Democratic National Committee not sure he contributed 8.2 million dollars uh, but $50 million throughout the 2006 midterms, $50 million for various propositions and races. Now, there was kind of a scandal in 2001. Steve had been, had a girlfriend named Lisa Bonder, who was a, um, I believe, a professional tennis player. She then married Kirk Kikorian, the billionaire who, you know, started the hotels in Las Vegas. The, I think it was the MGM Grand where Elvis first open the hotel and everything. And then at some point, <clears throat> Kerkorian and Lisa got divorced. Lisa had a child and wanted, and in an effort to stop his child support payments and lessen his alimony payments, Kerkorian employed the use of Anthony Pelicano, known as the Pelican, who I believe is in jail now, the infamous private eye, to get, according to Steve Ving, to get dental floss out of Steve Ving's trash cans to get his DNA to prove that Steve Ring really was the father of the child, the little girl, and with Lisa Bonder, and not Kirk Kerkorian, her ex-husband. And uh, it was true. It was, it was not Kerkorian's child. It was Steve Ring's child. So, um, you know, that was sort of one of those. And like I said, Pelicano eventually went to jail, but he used all kinds of methods uh, to accomplish his means. Um, so what else? Oh, uh, well, the big th event, of course, was June the 22nd, 2020. Steve Ng jumped from the 27th floor from his condo that I just showed you. You know, some people said it was a big surprise, and some people said that uh, it wasn't a big surprise, that he had told people he was bipolar. Friends, he was estranged from his family, but that he had told his friends he was bipolar, he was struggling with drugs and alcohol. So unfortunately, that's where it happened, and um, that's it. So that's definitely an infamous spot here in Los Angeles. Okay, folks, I'll end it there. My name is Ron. Please thank you uh, for watching and listening. Again, Stan, thanks for the suggestion. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and if you do subscribe, please press the subscribe bell next to the subscribe button. That will give you indications as to when I post, and please give me likes. That's what really drives the channel. I really appreciate it, folks. Uh, and comment in the comment section if you see fit. Okay, thanks folks a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and listening. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you another time. Thank you. Bye.